Welcome to All Classic Car on the updated Barn Finds Collection Part Number One. And to begin with, uh, we've got a Bedford HA van here and a couple of pre war Vauxhalls. This is an update to a series of videos I've introduced probably a couple of years back now, but with added commentary and extra photographs. So, uh, yep, this will be a two parter, this particular set. And here we have another view of the Vauxhall that was in the background. This is a 25 horsepower car. Um, they did do a limousine version of this as well on a longer wheelbase, but I think this is a standard 25 horsepower saloon. Looking like it needs a little TLC, as all these barn finds do. And this was a genuine barn find on a farm not that many miles away from here. This is a Rover 20 sports saloon. The sports saloon had the ro lower roof line and just two windows per side. I tried to buy this one, but just missed out on it. A glorious, glorious car. Talking of barn finds, we've got a gaggle of cars here. We've got a Morris Minor in the foreground and a lovely old Bedford CA. Uh, sat there for a very long time, nose to nose with an old Daimler, it would appear. Yep, this video is full of barn finds, restoration projects, including this garage find Hudson. Restoration projects, hedge finds, uh, cars that are being worked on, part dismantled and so on. Really a little bit of everything in this particular video. Some fantastic old cars. So uh, please make a cup of tea and sit down and enjoy this video. Here we've got a side on view of a very tired Austin Westminster. This was sharing barn space with the old comma lorry that I bought many years ago down in Somerset. All been cleared now I'm afraid. Here's a very original Morris Minor convertible. Morris Minor 1000 of the 1960s, early 1960s, something like that. Hopefully it's gone to be restored. Really original paint on this car. Plenty of work needed, but a really good basis, I think. Let's talk of Morris Minors. This was over in Portugal. We found this in a scrapyard. It looks like a Series 2 going off the badge on the back there. So that would have the A Series engine in it. There's a Rover P6 alongside it as well. I do love these barn fine cars, cars in scrapyards and so on. There's just something about them. In the same scrapyard, we also saw this 105 E Ford Anglia. It's probably still there. But don't ask me where it was. I don't remember now, I'm afraid. This was back in 2007. But I took quite a few photos in the yard. Fascinating place to crawl around. And talking of scrapyard cars, we've got a Hilma Minx Californian here. What a stylish little car. That is a two-door hardtop coupe version of the Hilma Minx of the sort of early to mid 1950s, something like that. And in an auction at the NEC, I think this was in 2021, a really neat little three-wheeled moto gutsy delivery truck. Hopefully that one's gone to be restored, but hopefully preserved in its original paint, because it just looks fantastic like that. Repaint it and you lose so much, I think. And here is an Austin 7 Ruby. Circa, what, 1936, 37, something like that. Doesn't look like it's moved in quite a long time. An interior view now of, I think this was a Vauxhall 12 or a 14, something like that. I think it was, I don't think it was any bigger than that. I think it was a 12 or a 14 horsepower car. Again, late 1930s, something like that. Bit of a garage find, if I remember. In a slightly time-worn looking Austin van here. You can tell it's probably always been a van. Those solid wheels look like the sort of thing you'd put on a commercial vehicle as opposed to a car. The car wouldn't have had those wheels on it, so I'm guessing this has always been a van. And a really rare find. This was in a Welsh scrapyard. A fairly sound looking four-door Cortina Mark III with an Austin 1100 or 1300 GT in front of it and a Mark II Escort alongside. As far as I know, this scrapyard was cleared out many years ago, so sadly no longer there. And there's a lovely old Prefect E93A that I had. Lovely, lovely original car. And if it hadn't been for the Ford Anglia turning up from a friend, I would definitely have hung on to this one. It ran really nicely. Back to the uh, old photos now, and a Volvo Amazon minus one front wing. This one from 1967. Even though it looks pretty sad, this one could have been rescued, but was it? I wonder what happened to this one. If you know, please let me know. This is going back a long way. This is a scan of an old printed 35mm photograph. An old Foden lorry we spotted somewhere. I think this was in the Peak District on the drive out into the countryside just to see if we could find anything interesting. And this was one of several lorries we spotted on this day. 
Now, a very tired looking pre-war car. I think this is a Rover P2, the remains anyway, of a Rover P2 saloon. Very, very sad. Well beyond any restoration, but probably some useful parts there still. Look at that dashboard still there, the clock and so on. And this is a great wartime, or a former wartime uh, Chevrolet truck. Many of these, as is this one, um, were converted and used by garages as breakdown recovery trucks and so on after World War II when these vehicles were demobbed. And this was a lovely old truck. Now to the NEC, and we've got a part restored uh, Humber here, probably a Super Snipe estate. Yeah, Super Snipe, quite prone to front wings rotting, the arches and so on. And this one looks like it's in the middle of having fresh metal let in to the front wings. Bonnet lost in here. These were made either side of the Second World War. I'm not quite sure what year this one is, but you can see the single rear window. So that means this is the Austin 8. The Austin 10, which looked almost identical, had slightly larger headlamps and a split two-piece rear screen. If you ever wonder whether MGBs rust, here you go. I can't remember where I photographed this one now, but yeah, it's pretty desperate looking. Carrying on with these barn finds, restoration projects and scrapyard sightings. We've got the remains of a Vauxhall PA. I think this is a Velox, very similar to the Crest, but I think this is probably the Velox version. There's a marina in front of it and various other cars dotted around. This was back in 2006 and much earlier. This was in the late 1980s. A gathering of decrepit Morris Minor travellers spotted in a field. They weren't going any further, but there was a few spares there for somebody, I'm sure. They're probably even still there. I'd be surprised if they were ever moved. Thanks to Vince for this photo. I think he took this one earlier this year, 2022. And it's one of the rare friary converted PA voxels, the estate car conversion. Very neat car indeed. Looks like it's under restoration, so hopefully it won't be too long before this one's out at the shows. Just a close-in view of a really nice little sign that appeared under the bonnet of, I think this was on an Austin 10 Cambridge about 1936 or 37. Really neat little sign there. This was in a local-ish scrapyard, which has closed down now sadly, but what appears to be quite a nice looking two-door Volvo 120 Amazon. I think it must have been in a shunt. I think the front corner was biffed in on this one and sadly it was written off. So many useful spares on this particular car. This was in Portugal, talking of Volvos, a big old Volvo lorry, probably still in use, but looked really, really original. So I thought I'd include it in this particular collection of images. Now, what do we have here? It appears to be a left-hand drive Jaguar E-Type. Just look at the state of the dashboard, the dash top there, the floors have got many, many holes in. That's a huge project for someone, but no doubt someone will do it, but won't be me. And this is in the this was outside the scrapyard where that Volvo 120 was photographed years ago. The body shell of a Lotus Elan plus two. Did this get rescued? I'm sure someone must have bought this one. It was certainly put to one side, so uh, I don't think it would have been scrapped. Back to that Welsh scrapyard in 2006. We've got a Series 1 Land Rover in the background. And in the foreground, an early Triumph Spitfire. I think it's a Mark III, looking at this particular car. Would that one have been saved? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? If you do know, I'd love to know. Right, <laughs> out to grass. We've got a mid-50s Daimler here. I'm guessing this is a Daimler Conquest. Um, looking a little bit sorry for itself, possibly without any front wings on it. Um, I don't even remember where that was now. But... <laughs> This is looking a little bit more altogether. CMK544, a really nice two door Ford Model Y. Looks like it's been dragged out of a garage there where it's been slumbering for many, many years. These were about 1934, 33, 34, or something like that. A side on view of a garage find Morris Minor Traveller. Super popular vehicles, you can buy everything for these. So if you're handy at doing a bit of woodwork, I mean, you can't buy kits, but yeah, um, a very restorable and very practical classic car now, but plenty of work ahead. And a very, very dusty little Ford pickup truck here. This is the uh, 10 hundredweight um, Fordson or a Thames. And you can see where there was a badge on the side of the bonnet. So that means this is the Thames, because the Fordson didn't have a badge there. Down at Brooklands is this slightly faded looking Leyland bus in the livery of BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation. 
hopefully this one will receive a bit of a scrub up before too long this was a couple of years back so maybe it's been cleaned up since then we can hope two for the price of one here we've got an old tractor I forget what it is but towing out a very barn findy looking Austin A35 van what a great little machine that is I wonder if that one went on to be restored I do love these barn find photographs. Let me know your favourites. This is a Ford model CX, 10 horsepower car, the 1172cc engine of the 1930s. The model Y was the 8 horse and the C and the CX were the 10 horsepower cars. Bit of French flavour here and we've got a Citroen Acadian, still with the old sign writing of a plumber based just outside of Paris, I think that was. Mr. Gouillard or Goulard. Lots and lots of classic Range Rovers here at the NEC. This was at one of the restoration shows in the auction area. Several faded classic Range Rovers. A lot of work ahead for someone there. Three and a half litre V8 engine tucked away under that clamshell bonnet. A side on view of a very original, very faded looking Morris Miner. But a friend of mine put this one back on the road and had a lot of fun with it. Close in view of the Chevrolet badge on a half ton 3 100 pickup truck from the 1950s. Plenty of patina there. Wowzers, this uh, belongs to a couple of people I know. And uh, yeah, this is an ex wartime Austin lorry. Really, really smart vehicle indeed. I think this one's the restoration of this one's been finished now. This was a few years ago. Um, it was taken there on the back of another vehicle because it wasn't quite finished. And back down to the NEC, the National Exhibition Centre, and there's a work in progress, Armstrong Sidley limousine. Plenty of work there for someone. Look at that wonderful engine. Oh, that all shined up would just look fantastic. All polished up and looking immaculate, probably by now. Now we've got an MG. This is an MGTA from 1938. There's a bit of a oldie worldy garage stroke barn findy type scene here. This was down at the Dover Transport Museum. Uh, if you've not seen a video yet on this particular museum, please look that out also on here, the old classic car channel. And back to the uh, local scrapyard that is no more a pair of Renault Espaces, the early Renault Espace pretty thin on the ground now so it's been a two or three years since I saw one of these in use um, but sadly these pair uh, had reached the end of the road as had this perhaps or has it gone on to be restored this is a turner of the uh, late 1950s or early 1960s bit of a rival for the uh, frog eye sprite in the day um, but the sprite sold in huge numbers and it tended to kill off many of these low volume sports cars now in Portugal we spotted many, many interesting old cars, including this Renault Caravelle. Looks like it looks like work started on it, and maybe someone ran out of money and it got put to one side. Hopefully, it went on to be restored. There appears to be a Ford alongside it as well. Now, to the NEC in the auction area and the uh, restoration show, we've got a very barn fine looking Jaguar here. Mark 1 Jaguar Saloon of the 1950s, probably the 2.4, I would guess. Uh, yeah, plenty of work for someone there, but what a great car that will be. And mouldering away uh, many years ago, I spotted this Mark 1 Toyota MR2. It wasn't looking too bad condition, really, so I'm sure if this was now, someone would rescue it, but this must have been 10, 15 years ago, something like that, so long gone, I'm afraid. There's a wonderful old Fiat Digger. Great looking thing, that is. Looks like it had been sat there quite a long time looking at those tracks. Back over to that Portuguese workshop and uh, work in progress, Renault 4CV. Uh, wow, what a neat little car that is. Probably all painted up by now. This was quite a few years ago, so I imagine it's probably all been done now. Over to the Smallwood Show. This was earlier this year, 2022. One of the many extra photos that have been added into this barn finds collection. This is a Piaggio Ape, a little Italian three-wheeled uh, pickup truck. What a great little survivor that is as well. We've got a P5B Coupe here, the Rover, the three and a half litre Rover. Very, very dusty, being extracted from its long-term garage home. An AEC Matador, ex-World War II, many of these went on to 
to be used in forestry, timber hauling, that kind of thing. And that's the case with this one here. Very, very versatile, practical vehicle. Bit of a work in progress, this one, but it's probably been done by now. This was at least 15 years ago. And this is a few years ago as well. I'd have took this photo of a Mark I Bedford CA. Um, had this benches in the back. So is it the Worko bus? Something like that, isn't it? I think they call them. But yeah, it's a Mark I CA with a two-piece front windscreen. Later ones had a single windscreen. 2006 and back to that Welsh scrapyard and we've got a Ford console classic 315 here yeah, this is the saloon version here's the console capri as well and this is the saloon nestled into the hedgerow and sat in somebody's garden is an Austin 10 Cambridge yeah about 1936 or 37 really original looking car hopefully this one went on to be tidied up paintwork well, there's a bit there or thereabouts, but it would already rag up quite nicely. Now, one of several cars that have been bought simply to rob its registration number off it. This is a Wolseley 1500. Um, whether it's still around or not, where these vehicles sold off, I really have no idea. This was probably 12 years ago or something like that. So the chances are they've long since gone. Um, probably still sat there, though, is this Simca estate car that we spotted in Portugal a few years back. And always uh, drive around the quiet roads if we can rather than the main roads and keep our eyes peeled for any interesting old cars and we spotted this one at the side of a quiet road and this was outside that Welsh scrapyard that I've mentioned before the Citroen GS doesn't look in too bad condition really going off the registration it dates to about 1976 or thereabouts but it doesn't look too rusty so maybe the hydraulics have let it down who knows did it get rescued i'm sure this didn't know <laughs> i think this is probably still where i photographed it i must go back and have a look sometime it's a jaguar of the 1950s probably a mark 7 going off the split windscreen um, a very very sad looking car indeed BMW 700 here, very, very dusty example. And they did the saloons and the little coupe versions as well. This one not quite sound, a little bit of timber behind the front wheels there, so a bit of work to do, but I'm sure it was restored, this particular car. Um, alas, this Morris Minor, I don't think this was going to get restored anytime soon. You can see the blanking plate actually on the rear panel there behind where the front door would have been, where it would have had the old pop up semaphore indicators, the old trafficator indicators small back lights as well so it's a 1950s version also from the 1950s is this slightly time-worn looking lanchester ld10 great little cars these pre-select the gearbox and so on real quality small car Oof. now this was a little while ago and um, there were two of these in this particular yard outside the garage this is an ex world war ii bedford an O series Bedford, it's been converted into a breakdown truck after the war, um, but this is very much the wartime vehicle. You can tell, you can see the front end tin work there, quite a simple affair. Back to Wales in 2006, and a pair of mini vans. Both of these would obviously be rescued now, even the one at the front there with a very dented roof. I mean, someone's picked that up with a chain looking at the state of the gutters, but someone would do something with that, I'm sure. Back in Portugal, a Rover P6. We saw a couple of these in the scrapyard. I was amazed to see this left-hand drive. You can see the little panel in the middle of the boot there where you could bolt on the spare wheel if you so desired. This is the twin carb version of the Rover 2000. There's that moggy alongside. And in the same country, we spotted this old Escort estate, which looks like it may have been converted into a bit of a camper or maybe just with an extra row of seats in the back. Someone's put a window in the back. Makes it a lot easier to park and a bit more pleasant to sit in the back of, I'm sure. Oh dear, an Austin A40 Somerset looks like it's reached the end of the road. These uh, replaced the Austin Devon in the 1950s, a 1200cc engine, which went on to become a B-series engine. But yeah, I think this one had probably, I think its driving days were over. And same for this Ford Model CX. Um, you had the Model C and then the revised CX came out a little later. The horizontal strips on the grille, you can just about see, identify this one as the CX. Slightly sad looking four door Ford Corsair is next and going off the registration. That's a 1966 car. Looks like someone's done a bit of work on it and gave up. Um, was it rescued? Who knows? Bit of classic tractor action here. This is a really sort of oily rag example of an old Massey Ferguson. Mm, it's 
standard Vanguard. This is the Phase 3 version of the standard Vanguard, missing its rear bumper, so maybe someone will grab that for their own project. Um, but it doesn't actually look too rusty. A bit scruffy at the back, but it doesn't look too bad. So this could have been saved, but whether it was or not, I don't know. This sad looking car here, I think, is a Singer Vogue. Um, with a, judging by that tree that's growing through the front of it, it had been sat there a long, long time. Another example of Roots Group next to it, I think the Hillman Hunter. And here we have a pickup version of the Peugeot 404. This looks like it was still in use, but such original, very original, mostly original paint, not too much rust on it. A lovely, lovely user pickup. I really, really like that a lot. This was found in a barn quite a few years ago. This is a Morris, this is a, I think this is a Series 3 van. I think they call these, a sort of contemporary to the Morris Oxford cars, the LCV or light commercial vehicle. Quite a rare survivor now. And this is the interior view, I think, of that Ford Model CX that we saw a few minutes ago. Um, pretty desperate condition, but plenty of usable bits there for someone. The chassis was probably all right too. Oh dear, we have a Comma Cobb, the van version of the Hilmer Minx of the mid-1950s. Someone's added some extra windows in the back. I think this started out as a van rather than being the uh, sort of Hillman Husky estate car version. And this was in the same field as those really derelict looking Morris Travellers that I photographed in the late 1980s, a Thames 300E van, looking particularly moth-eaten. The same as with the Morris Miners, I'm sure it's probably still there. This is back on the road. I see this occasionally at local shows. This is an Austin A35 van with added windows and the optional rear seat conversion to UJ446. That's the garage that it spent most of its life in. This is back on the road after spending many years sat in a barn not that far from where I am now. I know the owner of this particular E83W it belonged to his father I believe and he ran it for many years and it's been parked up for a long long time but it's back on the road now and that's great to see but is that the case with this another AEC Matador from World War II and again converted for use in the timber trade after the war a lineup of classic vehicles here spotted in Portugal we've got a Transit on the left there and a Renault is that a Renault 10 Possibly another Renault 10 alongside it. And what's that alongside the Renaults? Mm, not quite sure. Back to a dusty barn in, I think, Norfolk or Suffolk, somewhere over in East Anglia anyway. And we've got a Ford Pop 103E, looking particularly dusty and missing a rear wing. But otherwise, pretty much all there by the look of it. A real oddball vehicle here, spotted in Portugal. Not quite sure what this is. Interesting wrap round front screen on it though. So if you know what this is, please let me know. And there's a Ford Taurus in the background. To the NEC, this was in 2022, I think, the restoration show. I've got a mini minivan in the foreground and a fantastic old Jowett behind it, an old Jowett ice cream van. This is just one of the many extra photos that have been added into this barn find photo collection. Another wonderful old AEC here. Many years of life still left in that one. Look at those tyres, they've probably been on since the war. Another wonderful old Bedford here. This is a Series 2 Bedford CA van. So by this point in time they've got the one piece windscreen but still quite shallow. The Mark III version of the CA van had a much deeper one-piece window. So what date would this be? Late 1950s, somewhere like that. There's a big old common lorry that I dragged out of a barn in Somerset. And alongside it, the sad remains of a Lancia Flavia Coupe. I remember climbing on the roof of the Lancia and you could hear all the bodywork crunching beneath your feet. So it was, in a, it was in a bad, bad way. But as with so many cars, lots of spares. And here's definitely a spares vehicle. Or was it restored? Quite a rare little Ford Thames pickup truck with a steel body on the back. Quite a rare survivor, but in deplorable condition. I bought this um, based on a few photographs. I think it was in a field in Devon somewhere. Now, this was over in Cheshire, not far from Northwich. I took a photo of this old comma horse box. Um, looks like someone had started a bit of work on it, taken the front off and then given up. Uh, 
was looking pretty desperate at the time. Was it re uh, was it restored? I don't know. I doubt it. There's another sad little Hilma minx here. This one was robbed of its registration number. Um, there was a dealer not far from us that um, used to buy up cars just to sell the numbers off to the private number plate brigade. And then the cars just got dumped behind the garage, and that's one of them, sadly. We've got a 123 series Mercedes here, slowly being consumed by nature over in Portugal. Um, seems to be sat very high in its suspension, so whether there's no engine in it possibly, I'm not quite sure. But uh, these are tough old girls, so it could well have been restored and put back on the road. No doubt this uh, Series 1 Land Rover will go back on the road. This was at the uh, NEC not that long ago. NYR867, one of many aged Land Rovers that were up for auction that particular day. So I'm sure this one will go on to be uh, put back on the road before too long. Got a, more, a Ford Model Y here. It's just one of the two-door cars. You could get four doors and there were a few uh, pickups and vans around. But mainly it was two doors or four doors. The Tudor was the name given to the two-door version. Really smart little cars, I do like those. And here over in Portugal, we've got one of the coal scuttle that is a vintage Renault with a coal scuttle bonnet on it. And the radiator, you can see all the cooling louvers there, is behind the engine on these cars. Quite an oddball car, but again, it looks like a project that may be run out of money at some point. Another distant barn and another Morris Minor Traveller hoping for better days ahead. Will it get them, I wonder? Who knows? Carry on, we've got yet another AEC. The remains of the old sign writing there on the front panel. Very simple construction, simple ash framed cab, uh, flat panel work on it, so it's not that difficult to restore if you're handy with a saw and a set of chisels. Another Auto Union DKW here, this was spotted in Portugal. Uh, it's always good hunting ground down there. We used to just go driving around looking for odd bulls on quiet roads. This was one of several cars photographed. Uh, I think they were probably for sale, even though they didn't say so. But yeah, and here, a lovely old Ford Model A coupe, two-door coupe. With a little, uh, I don't think it had a dicky seat, or maybe it did. I can't remember now. But really, really nice original car, original paint. It just looked absolutely fantastic. A nice AEC lorry in the background as well. And a very dusty Ford E83W pickup truck here, surrounded by other Fords and other exciting vehicles of the era. Very dusty, but very, very restorable little pickup truck. Great, I really like that. Oh dear, a very sad looking Fiat, or perhaps a Seat equivalent of the Fiat 600. It looks like it may have been lifted up with a chain through the doors and uh, it's kinked the roof up so uh, I don't see this one going on back on the road it was looking pretty desperate and surprisingly rusty for what is a fairly dry country now a super rare Austin A70 pickup truck and this was based on the A70 Hampshire no less I think this probably came in from Australia where most of the surviving examples I think have been found um, but yeah beautiful old pickup and also beautiful and um, photographed in mid wales somewhere is this austin 10 cambridge um, late 1930s about 37 or 1938 something like that looks like it's on a reissued registration number still with the starting handle and the front grille and a couple of badges really nice little mercedes truck here wonder what happened to that very very appealing little wagon i think that is this is uh, part one, don't forget, this is part one of the updated barn finds and restoration projects collection. Got a pair of rare voxels there, a magnum, and one of the Droop Snoot Sports hatches. I believe both of those vehicles have gone on to new homes, so hopefully they will be restored. But yeah, as I was saying, this is part one. Part two will follow shortly after this one. Um, both unique sets of photographs. Now we've got a, this is a little Thames 300E with windows, so it could actually be the Ford 100E Escort um, with the rear seat, it's left hand drive. This was in that Portuguese scrapyard that I mentioned before. Nice little vehicle that is. And in a scrapyard closer to home, I spotted the remains of this 107 series Mercedes SL. Very nice car, very quality car, but it's got those tacked on uh, chrome wheel arch extensions which may be hiding a bit of rust this was in a field down in Shropshire and um, we've got a Bedford RL ex-military ex-army Bedford RL looking a little bit sorry for itself I went to go and have a look at an old pickup truck photo of which will appear in this collection that's the NEC and we've got a part restored for the 83W van a little half-ton van here 
These were introduced in 1938, if I remember correctly, and made all the way through to 1957, which is the year of my van. And in the same location as that Bedford RL I just showed was this, another example of an ex-army Bedford. Um, it's on a C-plate 1965, but that's when it was put on the road. Um, it would have run on military plates before that, because it dates to the 1950s rather than the 1960s. Many, many years ago I went with a friend to go and retrieve this E83W Woody. Um, coach built from the scuttle back. I often wonder what happened to this one. Do you know? It must be around somewhere, surely. This was quite early. It's probably 1940s, I think, this particular example. This was photographed over near Nutsford, um, if I remember correctly. You can see a sign writing for Sandbatch on the door there, and recovery truck. It's a Morris, uh, one of the LC series, maybe the LC3 or the LC4. This one's on the road, a really early split window version of the Morris Minor van. It says the world's oldest Morris Minor van, I think, on the roof there. But yeah, what a survivor that is. Preserved rather than restored. And I think, yeah, that's, that looks great. Back to Morris Miners still. We've got a part restored uh, Moggy Thousand here from 1966. It appears to be called Glenis, according to the sign in, the, in front of it there. But yeah, plenty of work to do. But you can see how the inner wing arrangement is on these and why they rust so much. Now, a little Thames here. This has got a flatbed body on it. It's not the van, it's a little flatbed pickup. Um, needs a little bit of TLC. It looks like it's been sat there for many a year, but someone will do that, I'm sure. Another restoration project here is a one off uh, Woody, a little Woody estate car based on a pre war Austin. Incredible little car that is. The last heard of somewhere over, I think, sort of Burton on Trent or Derby Way, somewhere like that. We're in Portugal, and a rear engine Skoda here. Looking a little bit sorry for itself, it may even just be a parts donor for a car being worked on in the main workshop, I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, you think over there the climate would be very kind to old cars, but not always. And uh, <laughs> a car that has certainly suffered with the climate wherever it came from is this Jaguar E-Type. What a, what a project that is. Plenty of work there to do, but I guess the value of the end result makes it worthwhile. But oof, oof, there's some work to do there. Somewhat happier looking um, is this really original Thames 300E van. This was seen on the Ford Sidevalve Owners Club uh, stand at the NEC Classic Car Show a couple of years ago. I think this one's probably been restored by now. Um, but all right commercials are well worth saving. Now this is an old truck. I've got a feeling this is a Fordson, but with a comma cab on it. Um, someone will know for sure, but I know there was a series of vehicles produced um, that incorporated the comma cab on Ford running gear. Um, but let me know if I am wrong. Back to the uh, local scrapyard from a few years ago, all gone now. This is a Mercedes 190E, looking a bit sorry for itself. Ooh, an Austin A40 van. These are nice. These are sort of a contemporary of the A40 Devon, and these were produced alongside the Devon's replacement, the Austin Somerset. Um, whereas the car model was replaced Devon to Somerset, they carried on with the Devon based commercial vehicles. A very faded Mark 1 Ford Capri here, but it looks in really, really good condition beneath that faded red paint. I'm sure that's still around somewhere. Oh, here we go. Here's that uh, Jowett ice cream van that we saw in the background of the mini photo before. Uh, what a what a fantastic survivor that is. I mean, that would just look fantastic. Try and preserve that original sign writing. Don't repaint it. Just try and preserve it as best it can be because they're only original ones, these things. There's the other side of it. That is just wonderful. That is just such a survivor to have lasted since what, about 1951 or 1952, something like that, to have lasted 70 years with that original glass and the paint and everything it's just amazing we spotted this on the side of the road in portugal we we're driving along in that suzuki swift you can see in the background there and this was just parked up at the side of the road there's no sign saying for sale or anything like that um, but it had obviously been stopped there a little while but it looked in great condition no rot on it really to speak of ah but talking of rust there's my old truck this is when i had it stored in the first barn that i put it in shortly after finding it in 1995 uh, obviously it's had to be restored because the sides were all collapsing and the doors were falling off so this was a bit beyond oily ragging sadly 
um, um, but possibly suitable for an oily rag is this Fordson E494C 500 weight van. Um, you can see the grill's a little bit squished, but it's the same as the Ford Pop 103E, so no problems in finding another grill for it. Uh, many, many lumps of Jaguar E type here seen mouldering in the undergrowth, and various classic car panels as well. Um, looking a little bit desperate, I'm not quite sure what the story was with all these particular parts. Uh, spotted behind an old tin garage. And here we go, we've got a Fiat Topolino, or possibly the Spanish built equivalent. And I think this was probably for sale, seen on the side of a road in Portugal somewhere. There's a Renault Dauphine to the left and a Citroen Traction of all to the right. Another gaggle of uh, Mercedes 190Es, slowly disintegrating in a scrapyard. Now, what are we looking at here? I am not quite sure what car this is, so if you recognise this, please let me know. It could be an Opel, or maybe a Simca. This was in that uh, Portuguese scrapyard that I mentioned a little while ago. Certainly wasn't going to be travelling anywhere further, I don't think, sadly. Another example, you can see the wartime style of these Bedfords. The front-end tin work on the military vehicles in the war was very different to the uh, civilian Bedford O-series trucks and buses and so on. I assume this one's still around somewhere. This is an old Triumph that I went to go and have a look at. I think it was a mm, Super 7 or something like that. Absolutely derelict condition. It had been sat there for years, but I believe this one went on to be restored. I'm sure I've seen a photo of it somewhere. All done up and looking marvellous. Looking a little sad and sorry for itself here is a Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow on a T registration. Um, I'm guessing that's a fairly late Mark 1. The later cars, the Shadow 2s, had the chunky rubber bumpers and so on. One of many Bedford CAs I found in the undergrowth outside a, a crumbling Victorian house down in Kent quite a few years ago now. Um, they'd been sat there a long, long time and there was no chance that any of these vans went for restoration, unfortunately. This was at the Goodwood Revival in 2021, a lovely patinated oily rag Austin 7 Chummy. What a great little car that is. Presumably all the mechanical side has been done to make it reliable. Looks like the hood has been replaced as well, but the bodywork and everything has just been preserved as is. We've got a couple of uh, Vauxhall Vivas here. Uh, looking a little bit sorry for themselves, but if this was now, they'd probably be rescued. But sadly, I think these two of there weren't uh, destined for any form of restoration, sadly. Here's a great old Land Rover used on a trip to, from London to Singapore. I've got a book waiting for me at Christmas um, where this restored, sort of refettled uh, vehicle is used to do the repeat trip back from Singapore to London, so I'm looking forward to reading that one. I've got a Morris 1100 here, sat in the Portuguese sun, looking a little sad for itself. I like the sign painted on the wall above it, great old scene. And I'm sure if I can remember where this was and go back there, it's probably still sat there. of Dolomites looking very very tired. The one in the foreground is actually the Triumph Dolomite Sprint. Those wheels, you can see the Sprint badge on the rear corner of the roof as well. Uh, 16 valve, bit of a bit of a handy car back in the day and they're quite sought after now but this one, hmm. Now here's a little Morris pickup truck that I went to go and see. This is where those Bedford RLs were photographed. But sadly a tree or a huge log had dropped on the roof and kinked the roof in and uh, done for it really, so I left it where it was. The Anglia here with a Model Y alongside. This is the same model of car as the uh, Ford Anglia that I've got now. Uh, this one needs a bit of work, but actually beneath all that dust, I think it's quite a sound looking car. A standard 10 companion here. This was at the NEC and um, this year, 2022, there was an immaculate one on the standard motor club stands. I think it was this car. I think it had, had a lightning quick restoration. Great little estate car. Now, many, many years ago, I photographed this one. I think this was somewhere near Northwich or Northwich Frodsham, somewhere like that. Um, looking a bit tired, an old Austin K9 X military converted to be a breakdown recovery vehicle. Chevrolet, this is a 3100 imported from the United States. 3100 was the half ton Chevy pickup of the early 1950s. Uh, 
and here we have a Saab 95. This is the V4 Saab estate of the sort of late 60s, early 1970s, something like that. Very original blue paint, nice colour, really suits it, I think. Hopefully this one's back on the road now. There's a front view of one of those old ex-wartime Bedfords that I mentioned before, converted into a breakdown recovery truck. This was the more tired looking of the two, um, but I'm sure it's still around somewhere. An interesting pair here, a pair of Trojans. These are Trojan personnel carriers, of all things. I think the one in the foreground was diesel powered. I'm not sure about the one in the background. Um, but what a great, <laughs> characterful little vehicles they are. Absolutely wonderful. And then Amazon, there's a side on view of that Amazon we saw before. And there's a later Volvo in the undergrowth to the left as well. But really solid old girls these are, so I'm sure at least the Amazon will have gone on to be restored somewhere. Now what do we have here in the undergrowth? It appears to be a comma cob, the van version of the Hillman Husky. This is probably about 1961, 62, something like that. Uh, but look at the rot on those front wings, uh, that's not going anywhere. And in the auction area down at the NEC, um, we've got a two-door XJ Coupe here. I'm not quite sure if this is a V12 or the straight six, uh, but either way, plenty of work ahead for somebody, but what a great car that'll make. Old comma here, I forget what this was actually used for. It was bodied for a particular purpose, maybe a laundry van or something like that. But yeah, that's really nice. Many of these are converted into catering vehicles now, so perhaps that's what's happened to this one. If you know where it is, let me know. And here we've got a, I think this is an Austin 7 Ruby in the foreground. Someone took that on a trailer. I can just see the label inside the windscreen there saying Austin 7 and an R. So yeah, that's a real barn find job. There's a Morris 8 in the background. Looking pretty tired is this mid-1950s Daimler. I think this is a Conquest. Um, nice quality car, not hugely valuable, so a poor one. You know, you could spend thousands restoring one of those and it'd only be worth a fraction of it, sadly. A really nice Citroen Traction. The, the old Light 15 here, the front wheel drive Light 15. The gaggle of old scooters alongside it. Looked like an interesting place, but I couldn't get in. So I had to take these th photographs through a fence. This was at an evening classic car meet. Um, I think it was only earlier this year. <laughs> Quite a barn finder looking Mark II Ford Escort van. Still plenty of these old semi-derelict cars to come. And here on a trailer we have the remains of a Morris Minor Traveller. Fortunately you can buy all the wood kit for these. So, uh, any traveller is restorable if you've got the time and the energy to do so. And I think this one will have gone on to be restored, I'm sure of it. Here's an interesting one. This is a Wolseley Hornet. This has a six-cylinder engine in it, with quite a small capacity. Six-cylinder engine from the sort of mid-1930s, somewhere around there. Nice barn find oily rag survivor car on the road. So that's great to see. What the future holds for this old Wolseley 1885 isn't clear. Is it going to be restored or is it just going to be used as a part stoner to keep other cars on the road? Who knows? But it's better than being scrapped or bang erased. So, uh, yeah, interesting to see. Back to that Welsh scrapyard in 2006, and I photographed this. This is a Vauxhall Victor. I think this is one of the 101 series Victor. Probably, actually, to be honest, it's my least favourite of all the Vauxhall Victors. I quite like the FBs, but these, the one ones I'm not so sure about. And now we've got an Opel Cadet Estate. Um, more often we had the Vauxhall Astra version here in the UK, uh, but other markets were more often Opals, and this is the Cadet. Looking very original, but a bit on the tired side is this Jaguar XJS on an X registration. a little sorry for itself is this Austin A40 Farina. It's a Mark II, it's got a slightly longer wheelbase compared to the Mark I. Different boot catch, different dashboard, um, but otherwise a very similar profile to the Mark I that went before. Early ones were 948 and the latest were 1098. 
Another gaggle of cars here slowly disintegrating into the undergrowth. The main car we can see here is a Sunbeam Rapier. These are really desirable and good condition, but if you get a rough one, you've got a lot of work ahead of you trying to put it back on the road. Parts are not easy to find. Now over to Donington Park for a commercial vehicle sale quite a few years ago. We've got the remains of an Albion lorry here. And up, up in the air on this little uh, little uh, forklift is an, quite a rare Austin A30 van. Not the A35, but an Austin A30. There's not so many of these around now, so um, it'd be nice if this one had gone on to be restored. I don't know. And part way through a restoration, I photographed this, an Austin 8 van. Really rare. There's not many of these around. Probably single figures now left of these. So I'm sure this one's gone on to be rescued. Back to Portugal, an interesting pair, we've got a Vauxhall in the background and a Simca Aronde pickup. That's really nice. If I found that now, I'm sure I'd be trying to buy that. There's an interesting one, not just an A35 van with windows, but this was a Portuguese conversion. Properly recessed windows in the back and the side windows in the back actually wind down which the UK market ones didn't. You can see it's left-hand drive. Interesting little vehicle, that. There's a front view of that Daimler that we saw before, looking pretty sorry for itself. And like many of the cars featured here, it looks like some work began on it, and then for whatever reason, work ceased and it ended up in a scrapyard, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, can't save them all. Got a BMW 02 here. This could be a 2002 or the 1602, perhaps. It's a left-hand drive car that looks pretty sound beneath that faded paint. There's my little E83W van as found in an old dilapidated garage. You can still see much of the old equipment and garage paraphernalia dotted around the place. Really interesting place. The 2CV in the foreground, that was someone else rescued that um, on the same day as I picked up the van. Several more cars that sadly were robbed of their original registration. That was the, on the side there, we've already seen that. We've got a Morris Minor as well, an A35 in the background and something alongside that perhaps, a Minx. But very sad to see these cars like that. And this uh, Renault Dauphine was looking pretty sorry for itself as well. Let me photograph this one about 15 years or so ago. Uh, it looks like it's probably a donor car for another project. I'm not sure if this one would have been restored. It does look pretty far gone, but you never know. Mouldering away in the field, somewhere on the northeast coast, was this Volvo 122S from 1966. And a gaggle of Morris Minor Travellers. Um, we saw a snapshot of these earlier on. This was on a different occasion, I think, but uh, yeah, I'm sure they're probably still there, but there won't be much left now. <laughs> Here's a wonderful old vehicle. This is an Austin LD. You could either have the Morris or the Austin version of the sort of late 1950s, early 1960s. These were bodied for all different sorts of applications, and that's, I mean, I love the old sign writing on that, great. And talking of old commercial vehicles, a wonderfully dusty Ford Thames E83W van, a little 10 hundred weight half ton van. Really, really neat looking vehicle that is. Back to photographs that we took many years ago and uh, using the old print film as opposed to digital photographs. I'm not quite sure what this is, probably another Foden. Really original looking, but oof, did anyone rescue it? I who knows? Also out in the undergrowth, uh, this was more recently, a little grey Fergie tractor. There's another one in the background as well, a slightly later Ferguson I think. There's a grey Fergie behind as well, there's two there. Oh dear, I think this a uh, 944. Its days of motoring were over by the time of this photo. It doesn't look too bad, but I'm assuming it must have had a shunt maybe on the far corner. Um, but yeah, lots of usable bits there for somebody. And the yeah, sad remains of an XK straight six engine under the bonnet of a dilapidated old Jaguar. Uh, there's a lot of work there if you're going to try and get that one running again, which 
Seems unlikely one of the two carburetors is still there, but yeah, pretty desperate. And we have here a four-door Morris Marina. That's on an N registration, so 1974 or early 1975, on those painted Wolf Race uh, wheels that you used to see so often. And up in, up in the heavens is the uh, body shell of one of the PA Vauxhalls here, a Crestor or a Velox. Uh, that's the earlier one with a wraparound rear window as opposed to the three-piece rear window. Um, but yeah. Mm. Interesting little project car spotted at the NEC here, another example of the Hillman Minx Californian. I think these are great looking little cars, really, really neat, based on the Hillman Minx of course, um, but quite a lot rarer now I think. There's a close in view of the badging on a very derelict looking PA Vauxhall, the old Cresta. I'm sure the badge wasn't originally held on with the uh, cross-headed screws when it was new, but yeah, looking pretty desperate now. Friends of mine rescued this many years ago, it's still around somewhere, an old Austin K2 breakdown truck. Lovely, lovely old vehicle, I went with them to pick that up from a garage in Shropshire. We've still got quite a few more barn find and garage find vehicles, and this is an A40. This was over in Portugal, quite a rare car to find, or van rather, to find over there. Looked in quite sound condition, part restored, and again you wonder if someone ran out of money or whether the workshop was just very busy and hadn't got on with it. Anyway, on the trailer here is an Austin 10 Litchfield. This was the replacement of the Austin 10 4, so these were built from about 1935 onwards for a few years. Looks like it may have had an AA badge on the grill at some point, judging by the non-rusty patch in the middle there. The left hand drive Mini is next. There's an interesting one that we rescued quite a few years ago. It's a Morrison Milk Float uh, X Co op, as you can see by the livery. I'm not quite sure why this one ended up, but uh, yeah, this was in storage at the Aston Transport Museum, if I remember correctly. Now we've got a side valve Ford here, covered in parts from many other vehicles, but what is it? I think it's probably a Prefect, the E493A Ford Prefect, about 1953 or thereabouts. Certainly needing plenty of work. Here's a really nice, cute little car. This, well, not so little really, it's a standard Vanguard. It's the Beetleback Vanguard um, with a revised front grille. So this is a Phase 1A version of the standard Vanguard. Very original paint. Looks just like a grown up dinky toy. This is a Morris or Austin Mini Estate. Quite a rare Mark 1. Still with a floor starter, a Woody Estate car. Quite a rare car. I think this one's been saved by a Mini Enthusiast. Plenty of work, but well worth the effort. Years ago, we used to stay in a little village in South Wales, and these two Bedford OBs, duple bodied Bedfords, were parked outside. And I've got a feeling at least one of them went on to be restored. They did disappear after a few years, um, but it belo they belonged to Richards of Cardigan. Now, back to Portugal and one of the faster back Sunbeam Rapiers. I can't imagine they sold many of these over there, but just look at the rot next to the boot lid. Uh, near the back wing there, there's some proper tin worm there. If you've ever wondered what an E-Type looks like without its bonnet on, the huge bonnet assembly, oh, well there you go. Really good access once the bonnet is out of the way. Uh, bit of work to do there, but looks like a nice car otherwise. Very, very dusty is this Austin A50 Cambridge SVM964 of the 1950s. Looks like it had been sat in that old wooden garage for many, many years. I'm sure that one's still around somewhere. As is this, no doubt, this wonderful old Alice Chalmers tractor. Looks like it had been sat there for a very long time. Bit of green verdigris on the panel work there, but the paintwork looks very original, so a bit of a scrub up and an oily rag, and that one will come up looking a treat, I'm sure. Here's a wonderful little Ford as well, dragged out of a barn, WSK 470. That's the Anglia E04A, which is the forerunner to my E494A Anglia. Same running gear, just slightly different grille treatment. Got a two-door uh, Hillman Avenger here. 
looks like it's just been pulled out of a garage somewhere if you know the story on this or any of the, the vehicles featured in this video or part two of the barn finds uh, yeah please put a comment in the uh, video section below now here's a little e83w another one of the half ton fords of the 1950s plenty of old wheels and tires in the back and a spare grille no less really neat little vehicles these are Gathering of interesting cars now, we've got a 2CV, that registration plate says 1965, so is that the date of it? Could well be. And there's a Seat Ibiza alongside it, Gijaro's design and the Rover in front of it. And just in the right is a Citroen Diane. Now we've got an Austin A40 Farina, this is the Mark I version of the Farina, and it's quite an early one because it's got the flying A incorporated into the centre bonnet strip. Most of the Mark 1s didn't have that, so this is probably a 1958 or early 1959, I guess. A couple of old Fiat's here, the Fiat 500, I think, on the left. And the one on the right, hmm, is that an 850 Coupe? Could well be. Still a few to go, and another A40 or A50 Austin Cambridge here mouldering away sadly after having its original registration removed what a shame that so many of these classic cars have had their numbers removed um, it's just yeah. <clears throat> anyway anyway here we've got a head-on view of a slopey headlight so six volt vw beetle and a couple of minis alongside we've seen one of those red minis already i don't know how many of these did the beetles often have steel sliding sunroofs i guess that's probably quite a rare thing we spotted these in Wales years and years ago. It's not a very good photograph, but two just about surviving examples of the Alfa Romeo GTV. I wonder if they're still around. These things rotted for England, so uh, you know whether they're still around or not, I don't know. Now we've got an imported ex-American, I think, uh, Jaguar XJ Coupe. They've got the huge safety bumpers on them. Now whether those will remain when it's restored, who knows, I guess. You should leave them on in a way because that's how it's always been, being an export car. But mm, we've got a close in view of a well, there's a gathering of vehicles in a dusty old shed somewhere. We've got a sunbeam rape at the top there, very distinctive rear light clusters. And facing into it is the uh, droop, droop snoot uh, sports hatch Vauxhall that we saw before. This was a scrapyard over near Lim that I regularly used to go to, it's all gone now, sadly. And I took some photos in there, and including this Austin K9. This is a militarised version of the Austin Lodestar lorry of the 1950s. Probably a breakdown truck, this one. But, yeah, looking pretty desperate, as is this, which I think, if I can make out the badge on the grill there, it's a Sedan. Really weird-looking cab, that is. It looks like it could be fitting either way around. Back to some old Fords in a dusty distant barn and this is a rear three-quarter view of that Ford Model CX that we saw the dashboard of before. Really stylish little cars but I've got a feeling this one might just be a bit beyond restoration now. Or when that photo was taken. Now one of the Neuer Klasse BMW saloons, a bit like the 2002 to look at from the front. Um, but this is a four-door car slightly earlier. Uh, yeah, quality, quality car these were. And that BMW rounds out part one of the updated barn find and restoration projects photo series. Uh, I hope that was of interest. Uh, I did publish some of these photos to the channel a while ago, but without commentary. Um, so I thought it was high time I update it and add in some extra photographs. So part two will be along very soon. Once it's been uploaded, I'll include a link to it here. But thank you very much for watching and please take a look at the rest of the channel before you go. Thanks for now. Bye bye.